Hello students, welcome to the second video lecture for the, uh, this unit. Please, if you have not at least watched probably an hour of the film Children of Men, please watch at least half of the film or so of Children of Men before viewing this PowerPoint. It'll make a lot more sense. So one of the things that we're going to focus on, and this will be split up into two videos, another video will be coming uh, later on in the unit, is how to use evidence when watching a film. We've talked about using evidence in plays and poems, but doing a plastic medium, a medium of moving images, is a little different. But our main general rules still apply. So remember, our general rules for using evidence in a paper is to introduce the evidence, quote the evidence, and then thoroughly explain the evidence. So the general rules will not change. So, one of the things that we do when we introduce the evidence, as you said, is name the person that is speaking. In poetry, it might have been the narrator. Um, for the plays, it would have been a character that you were talking about. In the film, oftentimes you want to talk about the director, if you're talking about the camera narrator, what the camera is showing us, or continue to refer to the character if you're quoting dialogue or describing actions. Now, one of the ways that uh, using evidence from a film is different from when we were doing the plays or poems is that you may use evidence that contains no dialogue at all. Your evidence may be a detailed description of what the camera is showing us, what is happening in the scene. So very often you may use something that has no dialogue or where the dialogue is incidental or not important. Uh, so if you're doing this, if you're going to use or describe a scene that contains no dialogue, it is always important to remember the most detail you can provide to us, your reader, the better off your breakdown of the evidence will be. So one of the things that we want you to remember to discuss are, are two things. One, camera movement, how the camera is showing you the actions on the screen. All right, pay attention to how the camera is presenting you the information. And two, sound and audio. So as you go and use evidence thinking about the film Children of Men, make sure that you are describing those two things at the very least. As always, we have a two-step breakdown for every piece of evidence we use. Uh, one, you describe specific elements. In the case of words, it would be specific words, showing the reader why the evidence you provided is important. Remember, no reader will be able to make the connection as to why you are using the evidence in the paper that you are using unless you tell them. You have to tell us why this is important. And then two, make sure whatever you are analyzing can tie back to the thesis statement and the theme presented in the thesis statement. Two steps, as always. One thing to always note, don't always state uh, events. All right. Remember that you may state important things like motivations, thoughts, character feelings, and so forth. But the real thing you're doing is telling us why something important goes to proving the existence of a theme or idea in the film. So let's take some of these general rules and apply them to the film Children of Men. All right. Quick note on how to analyze specific scenes from a film. Right? This is a very important uh, thing to note. One, don't rely solely on your memory. Take notes while you watch the film to refresh your memory and help you make connections when reflecting on what you are watching. These details help give you depth and support your arguments. You can screen uh, all the film that we watch in this class on your own time, especially now given the situation we are all in. So I would really suggest that you watch key scenes at least twice to pick up on the details. Um, if you rent the film and only can watch it for 24 hours and need to write later on the paper, YouTube is a great resource for analyzing key scenes, um, especially from the film Children of Men. Any important scene that you would want to write about most likely exists in YouTube in some form for you to rewatch uh, and review. Not sure what you should be looking for? Here are some starting points when analyzing a film. One, the characters. What are the characters doing in the scene? Uh, make sure that you use the uh, PowerPoints and IMDb to get the character names right. If you don't know who a character is, 
you may pause the film and look him up. Two, dialogue. If anything important is being said, all right, um, that is particularly impactful to the theme or something that even just jumps out to your ear as interesting or cool, note that down. I would suggest you watch all the films in closed caption. Uh, no matter your, your level of familiarity with English, um, if you're a native speaker, watch everything with closed captions. All right, It's very easy to miss important things that are being said. Two, plot points. If something important happens, jot it down in your notes. These are ev Not every scene will have important plot points, but it's always key to focus on the ones that do. A character dies. A character makes a huge decision. A new character is introduced. Something bad happens. Something really good happens. All of these things are important to keep down in your notes. You will not be able to remember them solely from your head. Next, patterns. Film is, like most mediums and most artistic mediums, has a sense of repetition. Right? Things will come up. Uh, character traits, character actions, lines of dialogue will circle back. Uh, the way characters uh, act will be repeated. All right? uh, even specific shot styles might be, be, might be repeated. All right? So watch for any sorts of pattern. Uh, one of the key things to look for this is music. The musical score for the film will oftentimes loop back to give you a sense that something important is happening. Think about any action movie loops back to the same action theme when the hero is doing something particularly heroic. Next, as we talked about, camera movement. Pay special attention in this film and scenes that you rewatched to how does the camera move? What is Alfonso Cuaron showing us? What does he want us as his audience to look at? All right. As you rewatch specific scenes that might be important, See how the camera moves away or to certain elements to draw your attention as the audience to them. Next up, as we said, sound. We are looking for the difference between diegetic and non-diegetic sound. So make sure you can tell if a character can hear a piece of music or if the music is just for your benefit as a member of the audience. So let's look at a quick example and uh, of Children of Men. We will also discuss this in our virtual class hangout during this week. So if you've watched the film, this is a brief scene. It's not a plot important scene. There's nothing there. It's simply there to help you understand the world in which you are living in and watching. Uh, we start with our protagonist Theo as he walks to work. Uh, he looks ragged. This is most likely due to a hangover. Uh, yet this is his normal trip to work. Note that he has a cup of coffee. As we know from the first scene in the movie, we know what is probably in that cup of coffee, right? But this scene is important because it's a great example of how Quran is going to use his camera to show you what's going on in the background and how that is almost as important to understanding the theme and ideas of his film as the actions of our protagonist, Theo. So in this scene that was captured, notice how Theo is looking at at something. We can see his eyes looking here. This will set us up as the audience member to follow his gaze. Very often we always look at what somebody else is looking at. Just, it's almost a natural human reaction. All right. So we don't know what's coming yet in terms of the audience, but we know that it has somewhat captured Theo's attention. Part two, Keo walks past the arrested Fujis. Remember, these are the undocumented immigrants uh, in, of the film, where he is uh, attacked or almost attacked by the dog and the police. He is told to go away, uh, keep moving, don't look at this, don't pay attention, this is not important to you, all right? This very much little scene symbolizes the government's role and how it presents the, the status of the Fujis to the people of this post-apocalyptic Britain. These are not the people you are supposed to look at. This is normal, go about your day, don't pay attention to this. Or, as the dog says, something bad could happen to you. So again, this is uh, the narrative forcing Theo to go about his day. To, as another character in the film says, just not to think about it. Right? But now something odd happens. If Theo, as a character, is told not to think about it, the camera and Quran wants us, as the audience members, to absolutely think about this. 
So, our protagonist, Theo, has left the scene. This is odd. For most of the film, we follow Theo almost exclusively. Like, the movie is very much Theo's movie. He is our main character. The actions that are important to him become important to us. He is the window through which this story is told. We ve he carries almost the entire movie by himself. But in this scene, he's left, and we don't follow him. All right? The camera and, and the director have something else to show us, the audience. So what Koran is going to do in this scene um, is instead he's going to push his camera into the background so the audience can focus, unlike Theo, who's been told to move on, on the pain of the people being arrested and captured by the government. Right? We are going to see what the government of Britain in the film doesn't want people to look at. So the point of the scene isn't to advance the plot um, but to show us the politics of this world, to help us understand how the world and setting relates to the theme uh, of nationalism and immigration. So the camera pushes in and leaves us with this final shot of a building being ransacked. All right, Notice how you have this backhoe pushing garbage being thrown out of the building across the side of the street. And of course, that garbage is being pushed exactly to the side of the street in which the immigrants are being held in the cages. All right. So it's showing you what the government thinks of these immigrants, which is that they are essentially human trash. That is the, the inhumane politics of the film. So we are left with the divide between the police and the Fujis as they're being put in cages to be arrested. We also get the view of the backhoe pushing trash next to the cages because the government thinks these people are just that, trash. So in uh, another video lecture, we will look how you take what we have just described as a key scene that helps us understand the theme and politics of the movie and understand how we can write that into our general format of introducing, quoting, and explaining evidence. That will be discussed in different virtual class hangouts and in a different PowerPoint lecture. Right? So if you have not, please finish the film Children of Men. If you have, start thinking of scenes that you feel are important that you feel you might need to rewatch. This will come in candy for you as we go towards working on our paper on Children of Men. See you in our next virtual class hangout.